Yes, it's the Totally Awesome Fishing Show yet again. The best fishing show on YouTube. We are now going for total world domination. Anyway, pike fishing, tips. I thought long and hard about shall I reveal one of my tips because obviously other people copy them, you know, and then you suddenly open a magazine article and go, hang on, I invented that. And this guy's saying, you know, he invented it. Now, this is a big game tip. That's why I know it's not being passed across yet and I've been using it before for pipe fishing. It's for fast trolling and or downrigging, which is when you have a boat and you have a deep downrigger ball that takes a line down and you're trolling, tr not trawling. Trawling is what commercial people do when they empty the sea of every living thing with nets. Trolling is pulling a lure or bait through the water horizontally like this under power, under a moving boat. But it can also be used, I found over the years, in faster water. And I'm talking of a bait that none of you will ever have heard about before. Yes, the humble sprat, one of my favourites. Now, what it's called is split tail bait fishing. And it's generally used in big game fishing for fast trolling for wahoo, kingfish, barracuda, from downriggers or with egg sinkers in front of the head on a sewn and stitch bait. Trust me, I do know what I'm talking about with the big game fishing. And if fish just under the surface or on a downrigger, maybe six, seven knots, eight knots like that, and you get a plunking great big take because it is making the bait swim naturally rather than spin. But you've got to split the tail. If you use a split bait, it will give so much more action when you're tweaking it and twitching it through the water in river conditions. Let's get in the totally awesome garage and I will show you how it's done. First thing you're gonna need, a couple of sharp knives. Now, I do mean sharp. If you get your kitchen knives and you sharpen them, do tell your wife, girlfriend, partner, children, whoever uses them, fat children shouldn't be using them, but you know what I'm saying, this particular knife, darling, is very, very sharp. Otherwise, she'll be dicing the carrots, and then when you have your roast beef Sunday lunch, you'll be going, hmm, that's a funny carrot. Ah, it's a wife's finger. So do beware of sharp knives. Two ways I'm gonna show you here with these two knives. One is with a stone, a sharpening stone, and the other one is the more modern gadgetry for kitchen utensil knife, knife sharpening. Now this one has one sharpening, diamond abrasive uh, sharpening edge here for serrated knives and one for just regular flat knives. These are not serrated. So they've got a very good grip with them like this. So you keep them pushed down and you just draw the knife across them and although it's going to be sharp along the full length of the blade here, I'm barely going to be using it on such a small bait here, just that small point. So being as it's curved up, I tend to roll it up like that as I come off. I'll show you like that there. Now you can do this as many times as you want really until you get it as sharp as you think will cut the fish because it needs to be a nice neat cut. It can be tricky to do, but you can actually get herrings, are the best ones really and sprats mackerel have a thick caudal peduncle to their to their tail keel and that therefore prevents them from making a good split tail bait and they've got a v tail which you need a fish really with a flatter tail to get the best movement out of it now that should be that's pretty sharp just be careful Another tip okay so that's one method you get any of these from hardware stores, very, very similar. They don't have to be like this one. It's just one that was probably a Christmas present gift, I would imagine, from a relative. That's the tip I'm going to be using. That'll do. Now, the other one is the old-fashioned, I've got that box, regular sharpening stone. What I do with mine is I give it a little puff off WD-40, and then you can get... A stroking motion like this so you want to draw it as you're going across and, and I've got I've got the blade under flex just like that up one way down the other try and imagine you're putting a slight angle on the pressure and when you get to the tip just put that bend in it you see I've got a bit of flex under there now you think this is doing absolutely nothing at all I assure you this is probably a better way to get an edge on a blade. Now a cheap knife, which these will be, 
they won't hold their edge. They'll be very, very sharp, but once you start cutting big fish bones up, or you hit anything that's rough, then obviously the edge is going to come off them. If you, if you invest in, say, a nice knife, I'm not plugging them, but they do make a very good fish filleting knife. It's called Normark. It's a company called Normark. No, they don't pay me to say that. I'm just telling you what it is. Normark, Normark make proper fish filleting knives. Very long, very thin, very tapered. And you get a good one, and they can last years and years. And they do take an edge. And being good stainless steel, they hold an edge. So you're going to get into this sort of thing. You want to make sure you do perhaps invest in a better quality blade. Now, that's getting sharp. Let's do that tip again. Now you want somewhere flat. That's why I'm doing it out here in the workshop for just cutting it. Right, let's get you a close up of this. Okay, here are my two sprats. And you can see they've got nice little tails there. But you're not going to get much resistance off these tails. You've got to split from back here. So I'm going to do them both, uh, both for you. Take, let's take that one first. And we're going to be using the long knife. So what you want to do, if you can just, I'll just see if I can raise that. You might just be able to see it. You can just see the dorsal fin there, little dorsal fin. So you're coming in just behind that dorsal fin there and just popping the, the blade and you're resting it on the, the backbone there. Okay, and I'm just gonna, I can just feel it if you've got a finer, and I'm pushing, sliding down because you want this dead central. I can just barely feel the blade just bumping through those bones. Now here's the best bit is, if you can see that, I'm just barely holding it and I'm gonna tilt the knife blade down because I wanna go down through the wrist of the tail be careful with your fingers there guys, be very careful. Okay, now we do this sea fishing out in the boat when we big game fishing and generally it's pretty tricky. Right, now what I'm doing is, I'm trying to get through, there we go. Now, that folks is about as good as it gets, I was lucky there to show you. If you notice that, I've actually not just split down the fish there, I've actually split that tail fin as well. So it's equidistant. I'm hoping you can see that. Let me just turn it over there. There you are. You can see I've actually split the fin. The knife is so sharp, it's gone right through the tail fin as well. Now, if you hook that, now, obviously when it's thawed out, that has such a, an amazing action in the water because the water will, the water pressure will get in there. And those two now are really, really soft and limp and loose. And they can flap around, they can move around. I don't know if you can see that moving even, even there really really good action now you can do it a bit bigger a bit further up here but normally you just do it at the back end like this and split tail the back just like that and i say it's not for distance casting because that's going to catch the wind and flap around here it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's going to flap around so it's most of my sprat fishing you've obviously seen some of the pike fishing videos we do a single ssg uh, swan shot and i'm just using very very i don't know 20 yards something like that i'm just tossing the the sprat through the air nice and lightly I'm not thrashing it out and I'm, I'm working in a, in a very close in proximity okay this one I'm going to do again so I find if you've got the back towards you and you're coming into it from this way it's better now this one I'm going to come in just above that dorsal fin just to show you the difference you can do this more with herrings more for boat fishing I find this is and you see um, it, uh, you can show people but you can't you can't feel how hard I'm pushing. I know it's pretty difficult for you guys to, 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 to pick this up, but you can see the principle of what it is. As I get there, I'm turning, just turning that, angling that blade down a bit. Now, this one might not be so good. I don't know what I physically, and, and it's a different cut. We'll have a look and see what the difference in sharpness is. Yeah, right, okay, I can see immediately that this knife done through that diamond sharpener, as opposed to the one done on the blade, has cut that a little bit neater. Still split it, it still split it, but I think possibly, well I suppose it's 50-50 when you look at it like that. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on a hook, and hopefully put it in my garden pond, and you'll see the extra movement you can get out of this. I've got the sprat on there for you. I'll put a shot on there, which you don't really need, and listen. Please, if you're one of those smart aleck, know-it-all pike men, 
don't even bother emailing and saying, oh, you're not using a wire trace, mate. No, I'm not using a wire trace. I'm doing this to try and help others and show you how it works in the water. It's my garden pond. There are no pike in here, though there's every chance the sprat might get attacked by a neutral tadpole. This is what it looks like in the water. And you see when you drop the sprat under the water, that the shot actually takes it down quite quickly. And this is just to show you how I get that twitching motion, which is much softer than it is when the backbone hasn't been split and the split tail hasn't opened up. Now look, I've taken the shot off and you can see I cannot work it at the same speed. It just will not sink, which means I cannot twitch it back and get that fast action. So watch it again with the shot. And you can see there, that shot allows me to twitch it like a fast, well, it's like a fish that's dying, I think you'll agree. And that split tail actually well, it really gives it a sort of a suppleness that it can bend. You can't really see it so well here as you can in a river. If you're in a river, you can see that the current can actually work those two tails apart. And you can even make them more flexible because you have the one that you cut by putting the knife against the backbone. Well, if you just gently snap that backbone, you'll make both sides equally supple. And that's really the way forward in river fishing or for trolling. And of course, next stage was get it off down the river. Let's get down the river and see if I can actually hook anything. Well, yes, indeed. Watch this take. Bam. Pike grabs the bait. You see the line spilling off the spool there. Let's give it a few seconds to turn the bait. As I remember, a lot of the time I only fish with single hooks now, those BB hooks, which you've got a bait holder and a single hook. Whammo, fish on. Well, you can't do any better than show people how to bait up, hook up, and then go out there and catch a fish to camera. There we go, pike in the net, job done, shows you the method works, but hang on, exactly the same swim, can lightning strike twice in the same place? You see DD on the totally awesome fishing show, that's exactly what it does do. Pike number two hooked up, bend in the rod, it's what it's all about, totally awesome pike fishing with a split tail spread. Battling to get that pike in the net was some fun. I can tell you, it's exciting this pike fishing because I can twitch those baits right around all the snags and overhangs. I draw it slowly over the net. It's in there. What a result. Two, actually, from the same swim. Can't ask any better than that. In fact, after this, I did hook a third part pike up there on the third cast, can you believe? So, a little nest of pike sitting in there. Now, there's a nice fish by anybody's standard. Yes, it's no monster, but to come out and show you how to rig a bait and then go and use that bait to catch some pike, I think you're fine. That's what it's all about. Well, I can be 
pretty lonely. You know what I mean? It can be pretty lonely on a riverbank, can't it? Anyway, I haven't seen any other anglers here at all. But, you know, I have met one guy, um, Arthur. His name's Arthur. He's, he was on the bank. He said he's been here... Well, wait for this. He's been here for something like four months since the last rain. Um, he hasn't caught very much. I've got talking to him because obviously I have to talk to somebody. Arthur, uh, would you like to meet the people at YouTube? These are my friends. This is Arthur. Arthur is... Um, well, he was, he was just residing up there a little bit, uh, just on, amongst the bushes, amongst the sort of high water flood line. But uh, he's my little friend now, aren't you, Arthur? So you come with me. Um, if you haven't done any pipe fishing before, if you watch some of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show episodes on pike, he will learn, won't he, Arthur? He will learn how to catch pike, no question of that. I'm going to see if I can even catch Arthur a pike. So we'll move up there, and I'm so pleased I've got somebody to talk to anyway. So Arthur... Uh, you got any other friends at all? I just can't believe it, people. I hadn't gone 30 yards and I found his wife. I don't know what her name is. What's your name, love? What's your name, love? Typical woman. Uh, Arthur. There's your wife. What do you mean you threw her in the bushes you don't like her? Well, she can't just divorce like that, can you? It's not that easy. Oh, OK. Um, well, Arthur doesn't want to talk to her, I suppose. If she hasn't told us her name, she'll have to stay here. I'll leave it there in case somebody else wants to talk to her. I think me and Arthur go off fishing. Sorry, love. Bye. Come on, Arthur, you come with me. You can never trust women. They'll dump on you every time, mate. Come on, you come with me. Arthur, mate, there's a fish. There's a fish. Do you want to catch a fish? Come on. Come on. Just, just sit there. You can do this. You can do this. Arthur. Pretty sure there's one on there, buddy. It could be Arthur's first pike. Come on. Have a go. I'll tell you what, I'll hook it, you wind it. If we hook it. Oh, he came off. He came off. What can I say, Arthur? I don't know what to tell him. We all lose fish. Well, there's no need to be like that. I'm not full of hot air. Well, if I'm full of hot air, you're full of cold air. Things you try and do for your friends. Try and catch him a pipe. OK, it comes off. Come here, just come here. You can do it this time. This, this is the rod. Okay, Arthur, this is the rod. Here, actually this is Arthur. This is the rod. We've had another take, we're going to try and get Arthur with another fish. Now don't give me any more lip. The other one came off, this one might as well. Just rest over there for a minute. I'll get the hook, yes, yes, you can wind it in. Bloody hell. comes off again. Get the net, Arthur. Arthur, concentrate. You've got to concentrate. Two fish lost. This is third time lucky for you. I feel third time lucky for Arthur. He could get his first pipe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe it was weed and I'm going to look really stupid. Three in a row. Three in a row, Arthur. What do you think of that? I oh, love it, me. You are the lucky, bad, most worst luck. Oh. 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 Arthur, you've heard my life history. And that's how I lost my biggest salmon, which nobody would ever believe in British Columbia. 60 pounds, who was an ounce? Oh. I feel drained. What's that? Oh, I'm sitting on your head. Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to. It's just, oh, just you've got such a comfortable head. Come with me. Well, we've really been friends, haven't we, mate? We've been friends. We got on well, but 
somehow, since I met you, I've lost three pike in a row. I oh, know, it must be a sort of a jinx, mustn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. So, uh, where is it you want to go? You want to go to the Isle of Wight? The Isle of Wight? Well, I suppose, considering I've lost three pike in a row since we met, Arthur, I think that can be arranged. Well, there you go. That gives you an idea. It's just yet another of the totally awesome fishing show tips from the old school way of fishing. Split tail baits. Yes, they're old school as far as big game fishing is concerned. That's where I got it from. But new school for pike fishing over here. Give it a go. It's worth a try, especially with big baits like herring. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you get bored with fishing and you can't get out, why don't you take a look at the totally awesome outdoor show, our sister channel. There might be something to amuse you on there. See you next time.